Hey guys, this is Jules. And this is Andrew. Welcome back to Code School. Today we are going to be talking about control. We've written a lot of code for this video. A button control, a text control, 20 questions in Code Sculptor, and 20 questions in PyScriptor. Plus the assignment code. Phew! Be sure to check through the forum thread for today's video to get the code. It turns out that one of the key features in Simple GUI is missing from Pygame. No controls for buttons, inputs, and labels. Well, we can fake labels by drawing text on a surface, but buttons and inputs are more complicated. For the purpose of this week's examples, Jules wrote a button control and an input control, so we could use them for examples today. Next week we'll be switching to a more commonly used approach. Some of you may be wondering if this is all kind of like cheating, taking one person's code and using it for hours. Remember, we've been doing this for a while now, using code from the Simple GUI module in our own code. There's no reason to do anything that has already been successfully done and willingly shared by others. So when you're working on a project, the first thing you should do is see if anyone else has already solved your problem for you. Don't reinvent the wheel. Your time can be better spent inventing all kinds of new and amazing code. What we are going to show you today is an example of separation of concerns. We've been asked for some reasons not to use globals. You'll see plenty of that today, but you'll also see that if you structure your code properly, separating the code containing game logic from the code that presents everything to the user, you can easily migrate your code from using simple GUI to using Pygame in record time. Let's look at this code. 20 Questions is a simple guessing game that makes the computer look like it knows things about the world. You think of an animal, and then you start the game. The computer will try to guess the animal by asking you yes-no questions. Your responses help narrow down the answer, and eventually the computer will guess an animal. If it gets it right, it wins. Otherwise, it will give up and ask what the animal is and how to describe it. The next time you play, the computer will include the new information in its guessing. In the code, we see a bunch of classes. A UI class, a state-based class, and several state subclasses, playing, learning, and game over. The game starts in the playing state. During the playing state, the computer will ask a yes or no question and wait for a response. Depending on the answer, the state will transition to game over, or learning, or another playing state. In the learning state, the computer asks about the new animal. Once all the information is provided, the state transitions to the game over state. In the game over state, the user is informed who won the game and is prompted to play again. Doing so will transition back to the playing state. Each state has code to set up the screen and code to draw to the canvas. But notice that all that this code does is delegate the work to an instance of the UI class. Let's compare this with the Pygame version. Here we see a few more classes than in the Code Sculptor version. That's because this version supports saving and loading the question tree between games. So we have the same classes as before, plus an extra Game Start State class and a File Helper class. The File Helper class handles the details of loading and saving the question tree. The game initially starts with the Game Start state. This state asks the user whether they would like to load the previous questions or not. Regardless of how the user responds, the game transitions to the playing state. From there, the game proceeds as it did in Code Sculptor, except that at the end of the learning phase, the question tree is saved. Now, look at the UI class. Notice it's a lot longer than the Code Sculptor version. There's more to do to make things work in Pygame properly. But you will notice the state classes are relatively unchanged from the Code Sculptor classes. This is the beauty of separation of concerns. We kept the UI concern separate from the game logic concern. So when we migrated to a different library, we only had to change one class. The changes to the state class had to do with limitations in the design of the UI class. There were unexpected differences between Simple GUI and Pygame that Andrew didn't account for initially. Remember, we're still learning Pygame. When we run the Pygame version, we see that it behaves very similarly to the simple GUI version. Aside from various ugliness due to speedy implementation, I'm told. What's the takeaway here? Should you always build monstrously complicated class structures because you think you might reuse them? Well, no. On the other hand, code we wrote for class exemplifies the other extreme. It's code that works, but doesn't lend itself to extensibility and maintenance. 
Like many disciplines, you must strike a balance between following design principles and getting the job done. Knowing how to do this is a matter of practice. Now I'm going to explain to you how to use PG Extra, which is the module that I wrote to accompany Pygame for this particular lesson. Step 1. You need to import PG Extra. Step 2. To create a button, you will call PG Extra dot button and then the parameters. What parameters, you ask? We have screen, label, text color, BG color, location, size, function call, font size, and length cap. Screen is just the Pi game surface, the display field of your game. Label is the text string of your button, such as click to play. The text and BG colors are the label text and the background of the button. These must be RGB values in the format shown. One thing you can do if you don't have the RGB values is you can use pygame.color and then the spelled out name of common colors. Location is going to be a tuple of XY coordinates of the top left corner of your button. We aren't using the center point like we did with some of our elements in Simple GUI. Size is a two element tuple that gives your width and your height. Function call is a parameter that will be the name of the function that is going to handle the event when the button is pressed. This is just going to be the name of the function without the parentheses. Font size is obviously the size of your font. The default is set to 40, so if you don't want to change that, you don't have to actually pass this argument. Length cap is default setting of zero. And what this means is that the character link does not have a cap on it. If you need for your button to have a cap, like for instance if the label on it will change and you don't want it to exceed a certain amount, then this is where you would put that number. And also like with the font size, if you don't need to change this, you don't have to pass an argument for this. Step 3. Creating an input field, you would just use pgextra.input field, again with parameters. The great news is, the parameters are the exact same as for the buttons, so you don't have to learn any new ones. Step 4. To use the buttons and fields, there are several methods available. All of these methods are available for both buttons and input fields. There is a draw method. Is clickable returns true if the widget is enabled. Click release does two things. First, it will change the color of the widget back to its normal color. Second, it will also call the function call that was passed in the original parameters. For a button, when the button has been pressed, it will then react accordingly. For input field, this is often not used. Click pressed is going to change the color of the widget. It's going to invert the text colors and the background colors, so that way you can tell when you've clicked on a button or an input field. Get Surface Wrecked is actually used most of the time for collision detection by Pygame. It will return a wrecked object. Get Label, it does exactly what it sounds like. It gets the label. Change Label takes a parameter of the string for the new label, and then it will change it to the new value. Call will call the function call. Usually this is what input fields will use. Disable will disable the widget, making it not clickable. Check event is handled two different ways. For buttons, it will check the mouse click, press, and release, and then it will call click, press, and click release accordingly. For an input field, it's going to check for the mouse clicks, but it's also going to check for keyboard presses, but currently it will only check for the lowercase letters, the backspace, and the enter or return key. Okay. Step 5 is to enjoy. It's 100% compatible with Pygame because I used Pygame to create it. Okay, now we're going to talk about the assignment for this week. There are currently three steps to this assignment, but it's going to get a little bit longer. The first step is to be patient. First, be patient with us. In order to get this video out on time today, we needed to put off publishing the assignment. We will have that out tomorrow on the forum, so be sure to check there. Next, be patient with yourself. This is a lot of complicated stuff this week that we're throwing at you. There is all kinds of new things in the code itself that you'll discover as you look at it. And also, these are just some difficult things to incorporate with last week's lesson of game states. So take your time and practice with the code and you will get it, I promise. Step two on the assignment, examine the code. We've given you a lot of it this week. 
There is the PG Extra code that includes the button control and the text input control. This uses Pygame, so that will also help you with your own code, being able to understand how Pygame works. Also, the 20 questions, uh, both the Code Sculptor version and the Pygame version that Andrew did, are going to be very helpful for you to see the implementation of the separation of concern that he's talking about and how valuable the game states is in not having to duplicate a lot of code. The assignment code is going to be released tomorrow on the forum. I don't have an exact time for that, but it will be announced on all of our social sites as well as in the forum. So be sure to sign up on our forum. You can do it anonymously, but it does require a login. And all posts related to this assignment are going to be in the week one Sunday code thread that's going to be on the forum. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please remember to click the subscribe button and click the like and favorite us. Mm -hmm.